Hey, Ryan here from Web Eminence. Lots of people want to allow their visitors to book services and appointments right on their website, but there are so many booking applications and several subtle variations in how they all operate. You Can Book Me, which is found at youcanbook.me, is a simple scheduling tool that many people use for allowing people to book appointments right on their website, and I often see it done right through a link in their email signature. I'm gonna show you how it works in this video so you can see if it's right for you. So one of my clients is using You Can Book Me in order to um, book appointments or to allow his customers to book appointments for an insurance claim visit. So here's how it works on his website, but I'm gonna go into the dashboard for You Can Book Me to show you how it all is set up. So once you log into the dashboard, you this is what you see. There's some help videos at the bottom, and then these are the booking profile. So there's one here set up for his website, and I set up the second one as an example. And you can set up as many booking profiles as you'd like, but you pay, ten, currently you pay $10 per linked calendar, and you need to link up a calendar in order for a profile to work. So I just um, clicked create a new profile, but I'm gonna go ahead and delete this one. And I'll go back into the second profile here that I was creating as an example. So I'm gonna click edit profile to begin to uh, go through the process and show you how a calendar is set up. So basically you can go through all these tabs at the top to set your options. You can click this link here to view your calendar live. And then there's also a preview at the bottom so you can see your changes uh, as you're making them. So there's the first tab, which is basic. You can change your linked calendar. So again, you pay per linked calendar. So you can link to several different, different calendars. And if I click on integrations up in the settings, you'll see some of the different uh, integrations that are available. And they do include uh, major calendars like Google Calendar, iCloud, and Microsoft. So I'll go back to the dashboard and back to that profile. And the first setting, uh, first tab under basic gives us basic settings. You can change the booking link, which will be a subdomain of something.youcanbook.me, which is where people will go to uh, book on your calendar, but you can also embed it in your website. You can add a logo URL, title, and then text at the top. So some basic settings there. The next section is the times tab, which is very important because you're basically setting your availability that will show on the calendar. So right now it has every day checked from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And so if I scroll down to the preview, I'll see eight to five on the calendar, the 4, being, uh, 4 p.m. being the last slot. And that is because over here I have 60 minute increment. So if I were to change that to 30, I believe I have to click save now in order for the preview to update. Then I'll see uh, 30 minute increments. And some of these are showing grayed out, I believe because of the linked calendar has something on it. So it'll link up to your calendar and show you as unavailable on this calendar uh, when you have an event on your uh, personal calendar. So over here on the right, you can also set padding, which is the minutes between your availability in case you need to travel from appointment to appointment or just give yourself a break. You can also change some other settings here like display uh, one week per page. Um, you can change the start uh, day of the calendar. And then you can enter a break here in the form of a time of day which will just enter a, a break in your schedule. If I go to the next tab, there's some advanced options like a date picker which you see right here, which allows you to jump to a date on the calendar. You can require a minimum amount of notice, like two hours or a certain number of days that people need to book in advance, and then a maximum advance booking so that people can't book too far in advance. Uh, there's some language and time profile options. The next tab is the booking form, which is where you customize what the form looks like. So after someone selects a time, they're then taken to this form. And this is probably a default first name, last name, email, and then some other things that I set like services. You can set your services on the next tab. But just to show you how the form works, I can add a question and they have a few options like a simple one line question, paragraph, checkbox, multiple choice, email, phone, block of text, times, 
duration, so a bunch of options. So you should be able to create any type of form that you need to get the information from your um, client or customer. So on this tab, you can create services, and I already created a couple as an example. You can give them a name, a duration, a description, image, and a price. So when you do have services set up, people will then need to choose a service before they're taken to the calendar to choose a time slot. The next section is for Teams, and if you choose to use Teams, it works similar to services where someone would need to choose a team member before they choose a service and a time slot. And then different team members can be linked to different calendars. The next section is Afterwards, and this controls what happens after a booking is completed. And you can change the message that's displayed, the calendar event that's created, the email that goes out to you, the text that goes to you, and then the email and text that goes out to the user. And you can control this by just typing in different uh, email messages here, and you can also use these um, short codes like uh, F name here, start date, and this will insert those fields from your form into um, these different messages. So to create those uh, short codes, you would go into one of these fields and type it here in the shorthand code text field. The next section is tentative. And if you use this, it just requires you as the calendar manager to approve a booking. And if you approve it, it sends out this accept message. And if you reject it, it'll send out a different message. Next section is payments. And you can integrate with Stripe to require payments for your uh, bookings, your services. And you can uh, change the currency symbol. And then the prices are set up under the services tab that I showed you. And I haven't tested this out, but I believe it'll redirect you to a payment page or a pop-up where uh, people can enter their payment information and complete the payment. You can change some of the other messaging under cancellation, reminders, and follow-up. And then the last tab is called appearance, and it's pretty important because you can change the appearance of your calendar. They give you a few different preset styles, actually a number of them. As you can see as I scroll through here, and I'll just save a new one so you can kind of see what it looks like. And then I think after you choose a preset, you can then customize the colors, fonts, header and footer text, and then you can use CSS to style it even further. So they do give you a lot of control over the designs, but a lot of people will find that uh, the presets will work just fine for them. So before I show you what the calendar looks like on the website, let me take you to the bookings screen within the dashboard because you can view the bookings and several have come through on this calendar already so let me just show you a few um, it'll just show you the information for bookings in this list form and typically you'll have a first name and email address here I haven't found a way to customize this um, but these short codes are not set in the form so it's just displaying the short code and then you could click on details for more details about the booking and just basically see all the form fields. You can reschedule, rebook, or cancel it uh, from here. And it looks like you can export your bookings too if you want to save them or uh, print them. So now if we go back to the dashboard, after you create a profile and a calendar, there's a few things you can do. You can view your bookings like we just did. You can share the calendar, copy it to a new profile, or embed it. So if you click embed, you get an iframe uh, code that you can copy into the HTML of your website and that's actually exactly what we did on this site here I just copied the code into here so that the booking calendar is shown live on his website and then the other option is you can just send people to your uh, booking URL so this one would be southstarclaims.youcanbook.me so it's gonna look really similar to how it looked on the website actually exactly the same except it's just going to be a, a page on youcanbook.me and it's not on the website. So most people would probably prefer just to put it right on a page on their website so that people can see your website navigation and access other sections of your website more easily. But it's really up to you and how you want to control the flow of the appointment process. So that's my overview of youcanbook.me. I think it's a really good solution. And like I said, every booking solution has a little bit 
uh, different bent to it. And this one really puts a focus on the timing flexibility and the calendar integration. So you have to integrate to a calendar. So it's going to work great for people who really use a, their own calendar but want to integrate booking with the events on their calendar. And then it gives you a lot of flexibility in the set the um, setup of the times and the padding between appointments. Not a real uh, focus on payment. So some other options might give you more flexibility in how you take payments and discounts and things like that. You may want to check out my other video overview of Square Appointments, which is another uh, appointment booking platform that puts more of an emphasis on payments. So you can check out that video. Make sure to subscribe. I do plan on reviewing some of the other numerous appointment booking platforms that are out there. So if you subscribe, you'll see those in the future. And please like this video if you found it useful. I'm going to do a short post on You Can Book Me on my blog. So you can check that out in the link below. And I'll include the latest pricing information uh, that's available for You Can Book Me. But you can, as of now, you can get a free trial just to try it out. So I'll have a link to You Can Book Me to head over there and get a free trial and kind of go through these steps yourself. So thanks for watching. See you on the next video.